Hey guys, so in today's video, I'm going to be filming a ridiculously over ambitious October TBR. I'm definitely not going to get to all of these books, but in an ideal world, I would. It can serve as like a bit of a November TBR too. I'll probably make a separate one of those, but a lot of these books are appropriate for just like the colder weather, not specifically this season. I definitely will be able to get to some of them, but just not all of them. This video can also maybe be inspiration for you guys if you are looking for autumn themed books to pick up before the season is over. So that's my justification for why I've allowed this pile to get so big. Without further ado, let's just get on to the video. So the very first book I have to mention, I have had on the go for a very long time. I'm not hoping to finish this book by the end of this month, but I do want to have made a little bit of Progress, maybe read 100 more pages of it, and that is A Call of Silver Flames by Sarah J. Mass. So, this is the first book in the continuation trilogy from Akatar. Can't really give any details because of spoilers for the previous trilogy. It's basically full of fae and it's quite spicy. I'm currently 441 pages into this book and it's 751, so I've got quite a bit left. I'm hoping to finish this book by the end of the year, but I just think it's unrealistic for me to be reading the entirety of it this month when there's other books I'd like to get to. So, yeah, just making a little bit of progress in this would be good. But I'm much more inclined to pick up like a heavy fantasy now that the weather's a bit colder. Colder? Cooler. Hopefully I'll go around to a little bit of this. Next up we have a book that I definitely want to finish because this is actually a book that I'm filming a reading vlog for at the moment. And that is Carrie Soto is Back by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Is it Carrie Soto or is it Carrie Soto? I feel like I'm not hiding on pronounce her surname, which doesn't really make much sense. This is Taylor Jenkins Reid's newest release. It came out in August. It's about a pro tennis player and kind of her career plus her retirement and then a comeback which is the reason why it's called Carisolo is back. So far I'm enjoying it. Not gonna give you many of my thoughts though because A I'm only 62 pages through it and B um, is an entire vlog coming away. Plus I will mention it in my October wrap up if I finish it this month which fingers crossed I do. Then we have some random books that I'm not in the middle of. This video is in no order by the way. I kind of just scan my bookshelves and then threw together like a pile of books that I would ideally love to read in this month. So next up is Unravel Me by Tahara Murphy. This is the second like official book in the Shatter Me series but what happens in the Shatter Me series is you have like a book and then you read a novella and then you have another book and you read a novella like all the way through it. This is technically like book three but it's actually book two. I'm not going to confuse you too much. Basically I can read this book now because I've read the first book Shatter Me plus the little novella in between so it's time to pick up the next kind of official book in the series. I feel like I've just like confused myself by saying all this stuff. Whatever. Basically this is the next book I need to read in the Shatter Me series. I'd love to pick it up before the end of the year whenever I'm in the mood for kind of like a YA dystopian. This shall be the one. The story follows Julia who has a lethal touch. Kind of how this dystopian government wants to use her as a weapon. Lots of like found family. As well as being like quite plot driven, it's a very character driven book, which I appreciate. This cover also looks very wintry. It's super beautiful. That's one of my favorites in the series. Next up we have another big YA fantasy kind of series, and that is Throne of Glass by Sarah J Maas. So this is the first book in the Throne of Glass series. I actually have read one book in this series before, and it's this book here, which is The Assassin's Blade. I don't actually know the plot of the actual series because I haven't started the official first book. I've just read like a little short story collection. So I'm hoping to pick this one up soon. The reason why I particularly want to pick these books up within the next couple of months is because um, they're actually doing a cover change for the series and I don't like the new covers. I know that these covers are kind of cringe but they're like iconic and I well prefer them and because I own two books in the series I'd like to like get my entire collection looking the same so I'm hoping to read this book, fall in love with it and then give myself an excuse to buy the rest of the series before they go out of print. Next up I have Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson. I wouldn't usually choose a hardcover in a book like this so I think I might read this book and then sell it and then buy the paperbacks of it if I enjoy it enough to continue. This is kind of like a YA mystery thriller series. It was super popular a couple of years ago. And it's kind of like reignited its popularity a little bit on BookTok. It's got a stunning map. I think it's about a serial killer, but it's YA, so it shouldn't be too grim. And I've heard really good things about it, so I think it would be a fun one to pick up. I'm gonna try and make this like a little bit of a priority. Next up, we have another kind of spooky, gothic-y one, and that is Make It In by Daphne Damari. So this is actually a uh, classic, a modern classic. I don't actually really know what this is about, but I just know that it's about an inn on the Cornish Moors, and so it should be kind of very atmospheric and perfect for this time of year, so I'm really excited to get to this one. We'll see whether I pick up this month, maybe across this season or into winter sometime. Across the middle part of October, I'm actually going to New York for 12 days, so that's gonna obviously throw up my reading plans a little bit. I obviously want to take a book with me, and I'm kind of going between two options at the moment. So I want one that's set in New York for sure, but I've got very different vibes. So first of all is Vivian and the Damned, by F. Scott Fitzgerald. I've read all of F. Scott Fitzgerald's novels except for this one and one other. So I definitely want to get to this at some point but I thought this would be perfect because it is set in New York. It's set during the jazz age. It's about a couple Anthony and Gloria or Anthony and Gloria I'm not sure who are kind of just living frivolously waiting for their inheritance. It says their marriage is a passionate theatrical performance. They're young, rich and alive and lovely and they intend to inherit the earth. It's just about them spending big 
in New York could be fun. This is quite a long book. It's got small font. I think it's the longest Fitzgerald that I would have read. 370. Doesn't sound that long, but his books are usually like 200. Uh, so I'm gonna decide whether I'll pick this one up or not because I think I might be more in the mood for a fantasy rather than a kind of historical fiction, literary fiction kind of deal. My option for that is The Last Magician by Lisa Maxwell. So this is meant to be kind of historical fiction fantasy. I believe it's YA, but it could be adult. I'm not sure, I'll have to like let you guys know down below. It says, in modern day New York, magic is all but extinct. The remaining few who have affinity for magic live in the shadows hiding who they are. Any who enters Manhattan becomes stripped by the brink, a dark energy barrier that confines them to the island. Crossing it means losing their power and not in their lives. Old New York is a dangerous world ruled by ruthless gangs and future societies. In a world where the very air crumbles of magic, nothing is as it seems, including the magician himself. They time travel back to 1902. It's set in Manhattan, which is where I'm gonna be staying, and I think it might just like fit the vibes of that while giving me something like a little bit cozy because it's fantasy. And a little bit dark because I mean this all Orboros. Orboros? You know, on the cover, kind of lends to something a little bit more sinister. Maybe I'll pick this one up. Also, it's a stunning, floppy paperback. And it's also the first in a series that I'd like to decide if I'm going to bother continuing on or not, because I believe there's like three or four books in it. So it'd be good to get this off my shelves if I'm not going to be picking up the rest, or to continue it and finally see what it's about. I've been owning it since about 2019. Then we have two more books. One is Without Rival by Lisa Bevere. This is a Christian nonfiction, and I only have one chapter left, and then I'll finish it. So far, it's looking kind of like a 3.5, four star. I'll mention it in my October wrap up, of course. But basically, the premise that I kind of got was that it was about comparing yourself with other people and ultimately where, like, where your worth should be found. But it kind of started as that, and it's kind of veered away from that a little bit, which is why it's not getting a five star currently. But I've definitely connected to a lot of the things in this, and I believe it came at like a really good point in my life. It has been really valuable, but it's just not my favorite Christian nonfiction I've ever read. I don't think it's written as well as it could possibly have been, but I think it was perfect for me right now. Like I said, 30 pages left, so. I might even finish it today. And then lastly, we have a book that I'd like to read for a video, and that is Bonjour Tristesse, I believe. Tristesse? Not sure. This is a modern classic. It was written in the 1950s, and it's about a young girl and her father and their life on the French Riviera. It's very short. It's only like 50% of this book because it's actually a bind up, so it's only about 100 pages. I'm reading this at the moment. I'll let you guys know my thoughts on it. Because like I said, I'm reading it for a video. So when that video comes out, you guys will hear more than enough of what I have to say about this book. I'm literally a chapter in and I'm already really loving the writing style. So I think this should be a good one. Make sure to keep your eyes peeled for when I release a video on this. So I hope you guys enjoyed that video. If you did, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I hope you're having a really good reading month so far. And remember, it's so much more about whether you're enjoying the books than how many you've read. Like I said, the amount of books I've shown you is not realistic to how many books I will read this month. But if I find at least like one good book, then it's gonna have been a successful reading month, even if I read like three books. I'll see you guys next time for another video.